Hey everyone, welcome back to The Fin Factor. I'm Paul. And I'm Aaron. We are on episode number 11. I can't even do that with my hands anymore. I'll go like this. That works for me too. Uh, number 11. What's so significant about 11? Uh, Owen Nolan? Owen Nolan, number 11. We've got a couple things that uh, I was a fan. Do you remember the fan's name? Mike. Mike. Mike gave us a couple things that were Owen Nolan memorabilia, and we thank you for that. Uh, on this week, we're going to be talking with someone who's a very special guest of ours. Um, I don't want to reveal the name. We'll let you know after the break here. But uh, we'll be interviewing him and getting his story. Yep. Uh, we'll talk about the Sharks uh, penalty kill last year. Mm -hmm. It was uh, number two, but we'll go into some more details about it. Yep. And then we'll also end with some story time. Mm -hmm. So are you ready to start the show? Ready. Great. And uh, we just want to say a big hello to a uh, fan of the show, Mr. Jonathan Beecher. Uh, be share. Be Betcher. Uh, Besh Besher? Be Becker. 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 Mr. Jonathan Becker. Becker. Nailed it. <laughs> <laughs> totally. So, uh, yeah, we have a very special guest here. Um, it's actually our first interview on The Fin Factor, which yeah. is pretty awesome, I think. A um, good friend from Bay Area Hockey Repair, Essen Gallo. So, hey, guys. Welcome. Thanks for, for coming on the show. We appreciate it. Great and we're looking here. forward to hearing some of your stories in just a moment. Again, we talked about uh, the episode number 11, the special thing about 11, of course, Owen Nolan. Yep. And we said we had some new swag. You want to... Tell yeah. about it. In honor of uh, number 11, uh, our buddy Mike donated two new Owen Nolan pieces. One is a game used stick uh, we've got now on the wall, and the other is a beautiful portrait of El Capitan <laughs> with the original El Capitan, who is now our GM, Doug Wilson, yeah. uh, and autographed as well. So, awesome piece, and I really appreciate it, Mike. Thank you for. Uh, adding to the Fin Factor set. Yes, thank you very much. And I'm gonna move this real quick, just so you can see. This is one of those two-piece stick where you like glue it up and you yeah. pop the blade and when you break a blade, uh, I didn't realize they used those in the pros, so. That's um, aluminum, yeah. Yeah, it's just really cool. Um, That's circa 1997-96 with a Nolan stamped on the Easton with the original tape. The <laughs> tape's probably seen a lot of uh, ice. Oh yeah, I'm sure. So I'll put this guy back here, but um, yeah, so back to uh, our guest Essen here. Um, I don't know, I guess we just kind of, we heard about your, your story and we thought it was, um, you know, really interesting and we thought we'd give you the opportunity to share. I know somebody may have botched the story <laughs> a little bit recently and we kind of want to give you the opportunity to just tell everybody kind of where you've been, where you're going and where you're at now. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you for having me again, Absolutely. guys. So, um, born in the Philippines, Quezon City, and then uh, my grandma raised me. So my well, my parents are working abroad up here, mm -hmm. and uh, she had her own business over there. And I got exposed into all that entrepreneurship. She taught me how to sew when I was eight. Moved to this country, but uh, just before I turned twelve, okay, and then spent a couple of years in Missouri. Um, but then my first stepdad back then he was a retired uh, engineer, so he had. We had a farm up there, uh, lived the farm life. It was actually the best part of my uh, of my childhood was that, you know, you come from the city, you know, grandma raised me and then I moved in a completely different country and uh, we had a tractor, an old Dodge Ram pickup. <laughs> what kind um, of animals? <clears throat> uh, cows, mm -hmm. goats, farmed, cracked walnuts all day, built <laughs> ponds. I got to uh, help my stepdad at the time uh, cut an 80 foot forest with a 36 inch chainsaw so you know oh, 12 year old kid of work. learning how to be a man learn hard work I mean that was a lot of fun wow, and cool. uh, I discovered hockey by accident watching TV <laughs> he had all the tech tools he had a 150 foot um, um, like radio we could we could talk to anybody in Australia I, think it must have been, I don't know it's probably Australia or Austria who knows yeah. and um, <laughs> he had cable so we got to watch all the, all the, all the stuff. So oh, so that's how you got that's introduced how I discovered, to hockey. That's what how teams I discovered. were on mostly. I think. The first game I watched that I discovered, of course, was the Blues, St. Louis Blues, because yeah. they were on the other side of Missouri. Uh. And then after that, I heard on the radio a Kansas City Blades game. Oh, okay. And then after that, I got curious, started flipping through the channels, saw a Devils game as well, and I was hooked. I mean, eating Vienna <laughs> sausage and Salisbury steak TV dinners. That yeah. was my diet back then, you know, country <laughs> life. And yeah. eating bulbs of uh, onions. So <clears throat> two years there. Um, then I see Herbe 
Uh, we we went to a, we went to an actual game. Uh, the Blades, this hat right here, yeah. um, up in Kansas City, it's about a hundred miles north of mm -hmm. where we were in Nevada. And um, is that your first hockey game? That was my first hockey game. Yeah, I saw a minor league hockey game with about maybe six fights that game. <laughs> oh wow! <laughs> and uh, that was I think uh, Irby was in that, and I had no idea who he was. And then after that, I mean, it, it was. It was just one of those things that just grips onto you. You know, you get a, yeah. you're branded to a country, mm -hmm. you're assimilating to a culture. I mean, I had a stutter too up until towards the end of my high school career, mm -hmm. um, when little did I know, uh, Urbe was Wade Flaherty was his backup, yeah. was part of the Sharks organization. Mm -hmm. So when we moved to California, they sold the land for um, natural gas. Who would have thought? Middle of freaking Midwest, yeah. right? Um, fracking, I guess. Um, yeah. When we moved to San Jose in uh, 95, 94, I'm sorry, um, Sharks already made that play. Perfect yeah. timing, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, they, they, I think they upset the Red Wings uh, just around the time we moved to San Jose. <laughs> wow. And uh, yeah, and then of course the next year, the Red Wings uh, got swept by... Uh, Detroit swept us, yeah. By New Revenge. Jersey. Oh, well, yeah. My other team. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And uh, um, the first thing I did when we moved down here was go to Grand McRoll Hockey in Japantown, and I begged the owner of the rink to let me fix his gear because uh, watching Urbe play and the story that I saw on TV watching him fix uh, his own gear in the, in the bus, I'm like, that oh. was it for me. Like, nice. Uh, That's you like, know, that was your intro in. Huh? That was like, nice. my grandma taught me how to sew. <laughs> I can do this. That was my way in to so afford in. to play hockey. Hockey. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so yeah, 14 year old kid, uh, Mr. Van Leeuwen gave me a shot, fixed some gear. He uh, gave me some cash, uh, let me borrow some, some of the rental gear that I ended yeah. up fixing. And then that was my, uh, that, that's how I started playing. So um, nice. fast forward. A couple of years later, I got into ice hockey, mm -hmm. um, Eastridge uh, at the mall, where it's the right, AMC yeah. movie theater. Um, uh, Kathy Andrade, who owns uh, Kathy's Power Skating, she was like brand new from Calgary. She is a skating st instructor. Mm -hmm. She helped me transition to ice hockey, and I made the Santa Clara Valley Blackhawks uh, Hockey <laughs> Association nice. and played midget hockey. Yeah, for, yeah. For, it's funny because uh, before I came here tonight, uh, Coach McNulty, uh, he didn't admit till about. 15 years later that he helped pick me to get the scholarship to play hockey. Oh, that was wow. the only way I could afford to play travel hockey was to, uh, through a scholarship. I didn't gotcha. even know that that yeah. thing was offered. Yeah. Just, but I made a team and I uh, played one season midget hockey and uh, that was the best experience of my life. Nice. I got to travel. Made the All-Star game. Oh, uh, yeah. congrats. Yeah. That's cool. Now, wh what position did you play? Goalie. Oh, okay, yeah. yeah. I started playing out, and then I got hooked in a goalie. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, Urbe was my muse to uh, <laughs> inspire me that I could maybe afford to play this and find a way to afford it. Mm -hmm. And then Marty Brodeur was uh, basically the main reason I played goalie. Is, yeah. uh, just his swag, you know, just... They swept Detroit right away. <laughs> 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 Sorry, I'm not a hater. We're impartial. Oh no, we don't anytime care who we your talk, favorite team is. Yeah, anytime we can talk no, about sweeping were, the Red Wings, you we're were okay a big with fan that. of the Devils back then after they yeah. won in '95. I was a fan of the Devils for a while there. Yeah, you used to always pick them when we were playing. That was mostly it, though. Yeah. It wasn't because I, I really identify with anybody on the team. It was yeah. that I, I like playing <laughs> as on the door. Yeah. yeah, they had the worst plane too. If I can just share that tidbit with you guys, New Jersey did. No, Detroit did. Oh. Um, you, they would fly in and they had the loudest plane because it's an old 727. Mm -hmm. And you'd see the Red Wings, very small logo. It's all white. And then the other side of that is Little Caesars. Yeah. And their lab would always get stuck. <laughs> so it's a great <laughs> training tool for like newbies that work at the airport. Hey, why don't you go dump that lab? Yeah. And then, then the, you know, it was a big prank of us. <laughs> but I think they replaced that plane yeah. when the company, yeah, when the. Anywho, so where am I? Well, so High you were school? you were playing, and I yeah. think that there was uh, maybe an, an injury or something. Is that around the same time? Uh, or? So after high school, um, I tore my knee up before uh -huh. like conditional tryouts. I was trying to chase my hockey dream. And okay, I had a couple of scholarships. My mother wanted me to be a pre med. She technically did not find out that I played hockey until I got that call to. Uh, that I got the scholarship to play midget hockey for the Blackhawks. So, so they called your house to congratulate you, and yeah, then your mom figured it out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, that was, uh, I think I lost my pager three times <laughs> in a month. Pager. Yeah. 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 That was 98. And uh, yeah, and she, you know, she got mad. She gave me a hug, and that was it. I mean, I ended up 
settling for art school when I got hurt. Mm -hmm. So like I didn't. I ended up getting stuck in the Bay Area. I was gonna go chase my hockey dreams. And right. Go to college back east, but yeah, um, stuck here. And fast forward, uh, you know, life happens, right? You, I've done insurance, mortgage, a lot of sales, business, but uh, um, hockey workout was a place in uh, Japantown uh-huh. as well. They had a driving range and also a uh, a three on three sheet of ice that. The base, the business model was that you can drop in, pay for an hour, a uh, bucket of pucks, you can just shoot on the net. Sure. And then uh, a lot of beginners got good real quick because the smaller ice uh, really forces you to work on that quick game. Mm-hmm. You know, like um, a small space, you know, you can work on your stick handling really quick and skating. Yeah. And it was like the f- kind of the, f- it was really the first of its kind. It was uh, revolutionary. They started out in a smaller, they call it the freezer. It was much smaller. It was <laughs> like, uh, 30 by 40 piece of uh, freezer ice. Wow, okay. And uh, next to next to where Gordon Biersch yeah. is their brewery in Japan. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah. So yeah, so that was kind of uh, kind of uh, my hockey background. Uh, my first job was at Valco. Yeah. Worked at the rink over there. Mm-hmm. Uh, David Guy was my first boss. Uh, he's the coach of Bellarmine Ice Hockey in his history too. Hey. He got to fulfill his dream. Nice. Um, Go he Bells. was an emergency. <laughs> yeah. So you guys, yeah. they just told me that they're uh, Bellarmine Bills, yeah. so I had to plug in <laughs> new boys as well. Um, yeah, David Guy is a coach there, a head coach, and uh, he got he got to realize his own dream of being a, a goalie. In a, you know, he's an emergency goalie for the Stockton Thunder and the uh, Bulls. Oh, cool. Yeah. So he's a great guy. He's opened yeah. a lot of doors for me, and he's a mentor of mine, and uh, consider him a friend. Yeah. And uh, my first boss. That's good. Yeah. That's so. Cool. Yeah, right on. Yeah. Um, it didn't be. What? Where am I now? <laughs> <laughs> I you're should stop on, you're talking. You're on our set. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No. Um, this is I, gonna get edited, right? <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> okay. Uh, 2011. Well, well, so yeah, I was gonna say you can you can kind of if there's more to tell about oh, that or. It's uh, pretty much it. I went to art school. Uh, got married young, and then I dropped out of art school, and then um, got divorced. So like between 2004, mm-hmm. I had a I had a major concussion, like my third one, 2004, 2003. So I quit playing hockey between that and then when I got back into it in 2009, mm-hmm. I focused on like my career, being an insurance agent, worked for AAA, State Farm, all that stuff. And um, San Bruno fire happened in Daly City. And then I, I, um, I basically left the insurance industry after that. Yeah. It was very traumatizing for me personally. And... Uh, I lost all my paperwork on the way home because my grandma is here and it was all my, my birth certificate, my passport, my driver's license even. Oh, wow. They were all in the box and they must have flung out the, the truck when I was yeah. moving home. So oh, wow. couldn't get a job for a few years and uh, I I, uh, I burned through my 401k, my savings. So I honestly forgot that I knew how to fix gear and this is <laughs> jump into 2011. So yeah. I'm like, I'm like, Flipping cars, I'm doing what I can, bouncing, being a karaoke DJ. Oh, really? <laughs> I did karaoke for a few years. Um, 2011 rolls along. Yeah. Remember Power Play Hockey uh-huh. next to the SAP Center? Yeah, that's I, actually Power Play Hockey was on the jerseys that I brought in. Yeah. That's, that's, yeah. yeah. There you go. Yeah. Hi, Calvin. <laughs> and, uh, he used to own um, uh-huh. Power Play Hockey. I answered an ad on Craigslist for $20 for an old leg pads something that was designed after Patrick Wah, right? One of the most famous gloves or uh, pads ever made, the Coal 500. Mm. I bought it for 20 bucks and I'm like, I'm gonna fix this and make some extra cash. I found my old sewing kit from high school. Nice. <laughs> and uh, fixed it up and I had an eBay account for a while. So I sold on eBay, I fixed it up with the old kit that I had, just stitched up some pieces. I sold for 150 bucks. Nice. Uh, so I just kept building and building and building. Before yeah. you know it, I was working out of my car. I was, you know, waiting for my replacement paperwork to come through. It took mm-hmm. almost three years to get my birth certificate. Oh, I had to go back wow. home to go get it. And uh, yeah, and so I had to really pay my dues, you know. And then, yeah. then I and then I did a little more, a um, little more day job. My last day job was uh, was in accounting. So I actually worked two jobs doing the repair stuff out of my garage. Fast forward to 2012, mm-hmm. and uh, I quit my day job. I think in 2014, and went full time doing this. Nice. So, and then the shop that you went to visit across yeah. the street from where the sharks mm-hmm. uh, practice, I moved in there in 2016. Nice. And I never looked back. 
So uh, that's great. That's awesome. It's been a grind. We're still grinding. <laughs> you know, we're kind of your bridge gap between like um, a, a true retail store where you buy the new gear mm -hmm. and they have basic post sale services, and then we're in between that and also your traditional pro shop, which is yeah. uh, shops that you see inside uh, hockey rinks. Mm -hmm. We've really focused on on. I guess you could say we're recycling gear. We're keeping them okay. on the keeping them on the ice, but we really focus on safety and consistent service yeah. to where our bottom line is that we want to protect you, we want to maximize your game, also save you money in the long run. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. Well, and and I like there was kind of like a mantra to your shop about um, having an equipment manager. Like why why yeah. should the equipment yeah. manager just be reserved for the NHL team, right? Why mm -hmm. not have uh, any everyday person have we're for the regular folks yeah, yeah. hockey parents uh, appreciate what we do for them and uh, like it's it's great when I can apply the skills that I learned from my sales experience my insurance like you really get to know the families that you're insuring because you're at the end of the day you're selling on the promise mm -hmm. if there, you know I kind of was inspired by AAA and how they did their <laughs> sales and marketing. Yeah. I feel bad for AAA. I hope you guys get rid of your training modules with my voice in it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> there was a time where I got my hands in everything uh -huh. and uh, I love to learn. Like I've always been curious, taking things apart. Sure, That's kind of yeah. how it started and then mm -hmm. you struggle to put it back together. But <laughs> yeah. when you do accomplish that feat, I'm like, yeah. I gain a new skill. Yeah. Nice. And, um, you know, you can't beat Reddit. When Reddit was invented, oh, my God. It <laughs> a whole new set of doors for me, too. Well, so speaking about putting things back together, um, you actually brought a few things yes. um, that you've repaired. And there's there's actually some story behind some yeah. of these pieces. So yeah, which you one would you like to start we'll with? We'll start maybe with the gloves, I All think. Right. Yeah. Let's start with the simple stuff. So yeah. every year, the uh, the Sharks have uh, a sale, like a... Uh, Used gear, uh, yeah, used gear equipment sale. A lot of that stuff is game use. This is Havlat's old game use uh, <laughs> set, and it's uh, we're selling it for 150 at the shop. So the idea behind these refurbished gear is that a lot of the players um, they go through a few of these a month. They're very thin layered. You want to <laughs> check that out? I refurbished that. There was eight holes on that palm, and wow. uh, we changed That's the palm, so do some repairs, yeah. and. Uh, a lot of hockey players love wearing uh, pro stock game use gear. Yeah, you know it's stylish. Yeah. A lot of hockey is more about form than it is function, <laughs> or is it the other way around? I don't. Know. <laughs> it's better to look good playing hockey than to actually play good. That's you feel better. Yeah, say. You feel better. Uh, when I you feel look good. good when I'm wearing this stuff. <laughs> I got to. So this other one here is there. Uh, we go. Steve Shields. Uh, this was his first yeah, set that he yeah. used. Yeah when he uh, played for the Sharks yeah, out of Buffalo. Nice. So this is his actual pads. Actual pads. Yeah. And um, this That's is so basically cool. the predecessor to what Nabby used for seven seasons. Oh, really? Because wow. he used a Bauer reactor yeah. mm -hmm. before he uh, also switched to the Vaughn, but basically copied each other. So what was wrong with this piece of gear? Maybe so like this green part right here, I restored all that. It was yeah. basically grounded down. It was gray. It was originally teal itself, but it was so worn down. Um, it's past hands many times, mm -hmm. and uh, we, we, f we refurbished this part. We recolored it, we fixed up a lot of the tears. Oh, okay. And then I kind of converted the strapping in there so I could use it myself, because changing some of the leather straps yeah. removes ounces oh, of yeah. the weight. Yeah. And yeah, the, yeah, every little helps, yeah. The For string sure. in the middle, if you, you, you're holding it right there. See this? Oh, yeah. <coughs> this keeps the pad together. Oh, it this. Sandwich. It sandwich. It binds the front and the back together. It's called elastic. So this is, uh, a lot of this stuff has been, you know, tediously repaired. And yeah. uh, it's one of the pieces that's got a great story behind it. And uh, I like keeping memorably in my... <laughs> it's pretty light for how big it is. Pads these days yeah. are, are four pounds. Wow. There you go. This is four pounds, just one. Back in the day when pads were made Close of deer five, hide and, and, and leather, they could soak up up to 20 pounds after your Ooh. game is done. Oh, wow. Called sweat. Yeah, they're yeah. more porous back then, and they, a lot of pads these days are, are synthetic and really lightweight, which contributes to goalies being way better than they were and yeah. faster quicker. Yeah. and quicker. So, yeah, this uh, just just another sample. Yeah, you know, I, I got to use this a few times at the Snoopy tournament in Santa Rosa. Mm -hmm. You know, the old geezers play. Yeah, it's a lot of fun, <laughs> and uh, 
Yeah. I, so uh, we, we've actually um, got a, a picture of you, and we'll put the picture up on the screen. Yeah, we've yeah. got a picture of you in Archer's Urbe's yeah. gear, right? Yeah. Yeah. So um, uh, I'll share that with you guys. Sure. Um, yeah. Two years ago, uh, during the 25th anniversary of the Sharks, they would honor a certain shark that was basically a legend because um, I think Owen Nolan is a San Jose Hall of Famer, mm -hmm. a sports Hall of Famer. Also, Urbe is one of those uh, um, uh, honorees as well. That's what Nabokov just got inducted yes. like a month ago. Maybe. Yes. Yeah. Well, congratulations, Abby. <laughs> He's still very active. He coaches his, uh, his son's team. is also part of the development uh, mm -hmm. for the Sharks as well. I see him a lot of the you know, the best part of my day is going to the shop and I see the guys come out of practice and they come out of that lot and mm -hmm. nice yeah and uh, I'm gonna add the uh, I have boilers banner and also Nabby's banner we're gonna add nice. the, oh, the yeah. Shop cool. too. yeah and um, we're gonna leave the wins because uh, a tradition there fourth year going is uh, we're gonna put the wins during the playoffs we don't remove it until the new season starts oh nice. okay, okay yeah so we uh, Whenever the Sharks win the playoffs, we put a new win column on the on the nice. side out there. So That's with Urbe, awesome. I'm sorry, uh, with, no, okay. with uh, <laughs> with Urbe, we got to hang out for an hour at the rink. I uh, got to catch up with him uh, two years ago. Um, I've sent him, I've sent him letters. We keep in touch. He gave me his, uh, <laughs> he he lets me uh, uh, talk to him. And I just you know I just keep in touch with Archer. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's cool. No big deal. Uh, really <laughs> nice guy. He's very you know. My first exp my f first time I met him was when I was uh, fourteen. I mm -hmm. waited for him to come out of uh, the back oh, of okay, uh, yeah. Shark Tank. Sure, uh, he's been known to work out after he plays, and he doesn't come out until he's done with all that. Mm -hmm. So, but I had a uh, I had my bike with me waiting outside. Fourteen year old kid scared, <laughs> but and he got his autograph, yeah. and that was that was amazing. Yeah, you know? that, so yeah. I don't think I ever got a chance to actually thank him for. Inspire me yeah, to like get you into it. Yeah. Uh, Irbe, if we get this, <laughs> I'll send you the link. I'll send you the link. <laughs> maybe, maybe you can come to the shop for the All Star uh, Week, do an autograph session with uh, in my shop. So. Yes, that'd be cool. Yeah. That'd be great. Yeah, well, that'd be great. Yeah, yeah. that'd be awesome. Yeah. Uh, so, so you do more than just re repairing gear. Yeah. you've actually done some of your own in inventions, if you will. Yeah, right? so. um, I dabbled around with. Uh, we're making my own goalie equipment. Okay. Uh, Carlos De La Pina is uh, oh. my tester, my Carlos. beer leaguer. Yeah. He's the most famous uh, beer leaguer in shark size hockey league <laughs> history. <laughs> um, you knew him right away? Huh? You knew him? Yeah, well, he was the, the referee for the uh, playoff game that he we lost. He everything uh. at that rink, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Carlos should get paid to play. I will start this movement. Anywho, <laughs> um, we got to test out North Rink on Monday. Oh, is okay. it Monday? Yeah, Monday night, Labor Day, mm -hmm. right? Uh, the ice in North Rink is harder, it's better, it's faster, it's amazing. Thank right. you, great job, guys. So they've just redone North Rink and Center Ice yeah. as well, right? So yeah. it's supposedly a really awesome experience. I haven't played on it yet, really can't wait. Oh, you will. Yeah, it's the second preseason game that we have, and I'll be on there. Oh, so, yeah. I'll have to watch that. No, you don't. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen ugly, you play, ugly. you're pretty good. No, it's no. Yes. Yes, um, I'm pretty good. Uh, Carlos, uh, <laughs> in 2016, we built about 18 sets of glove and blocker, and then w two leg pads, and one is uh, set still in Long Island, and then mm -hmm. most of them are here. And uh, he's played about 800 games in beer league hockey with. Uh, it was a Deadpool wow. themed custom glove and blocker. We never got around to the pads because it honestly took 200 hours to make those from scratch. Wow, and. Uh, Deadpool themed. The Deadpool theme. So when That's the Deadpool movie came out February yeah. 14th, Valentine's Day in 2016, um, I put the graphics in there with Deadpool and then uh, Carlos's like embroidered number on it. <laughs> and he made me look so bad the other night because <laughs> I played goalie against him. Uh -huh. He windmilled so many freaking shots. Like, <laughs> I don't know whether to be mad or proud because he's still using my set. Yeah. And uh, it t it's it's awesome to play with your peers, your customers, and the people. Yeah. He, he worked at hockey workout at uh, hockey workout with me at the uh, at the shop as well at one yeah, time. Yeah, so yeah. I've known him a long time. He's great people. Very cool. The, this hockey community is all about people and Love the people it. that play in it. We yeah. have the biggest beer league <laughs> in the country. <laughs> we, we do. Yeah. <laughs> really? Yeah. yeah. Wow. Yeah, it's huge. It's it's massive. It's gonna be almost two hundred teams 
between wow. nine divisions, and then each division from one to nine has uh, subdivisions like A, B, C. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Nor know why you guys play so no, late. It's, it's insane. Yeah. No and even the there. B's, like seven B, there's a West and an East. Yeah, it's they have tons of, yeah. of leagues and teams. Yeah. And you know, hot water is still the biggest issue at the <laughs> rink. So if you play an eleven thirty game. You know, it's a crapshoot. <laughs> yeah. So, so you, you've, you've made a full set of goalie gear, it sounds like. Uh, yeah. You actually brought a couple things yeah. um, um, to share, too. So Maybe on the smaller end, not full-on yeah. goalie gear. But. Um, so, like, throughout the years, uh, develop products that is practical, people that can use, sure. and also could reach uh, on a worldwide scale. So what these guys are yeah. is uh, just a swatch of what we call blade, pull, uh, blade runner bags. Mm -hmm. Uh, they're two separate words so that we do not infringe on any movie titles <laughs> or copyrights or anything like that, uh, trademarks. But so the idea works. behind this bag is it holds uh, up to two pairs of steel. The culture nowadays is uh, steel tends to break more. If you play for a travel team, you want to carry at least one backup because right. when you're on the road, the worst thing can happen is in the middle of the game, you break your steel or you need to get them sharpened mm -hmm. so that... Nowadays, you have uh, what kind of uh, skates do you have? Oh gosh, I have uh, yeah, CCM U plus tens or twelve so or something like that. Those it's older ones, yeah. The, the holders, it's got two screws. You can yeah. literally loosen them up. I takes, love that he uh, knows exactly what my <laughs> skates have. Yeah, like, they have the E Pro holder. There you um, go. Yeah, we sell the steel for them, sharpen them. Yeah, I it, bought the um, step steel from you guys. Actually, yes, you yeah. did. Yeah. Uh, how do you like it? You just I like it. I keep getting little divots in there though for some reason. Oh, must the be is. the rubber mats yeah. out there. Could be. Yeah, it's not an inside side job right no uh, one's out against so. you no when i'm pulling them out of your shop they seem to be okay it's when i come <laughs> off the ice <laughs> yeah <laughs> you have skate guards i do oh good yeah. you should get one of these too salesman so, <laughs> that. Plug, nice segue <laughs> you play soccer you can't say anything sorry I'm, like, I'm a goalie though <laughs> yeah Oh. Which, interestingly enough, before we get to this, yes. you did just tell us a story about you doing some goalie gloves just recently, but soccer goalie gloves. Yeah, I, yeah, earlier today, it was a two-minute oh. repair <laughs> oh, job. Today. Hey, I it was today. <laughs> today was just I'm on one of those days, like, I work Labor Day, and I'm like, I'm supposed to be slow today, but we're busy, but yeah. Um, somebody that work, uh, plays at uh, Silver Creek, Silver Silver Creek. Yeah, yeah, indoor. I forgot that soccer goalies actually wear, like, thicker goalie gloves, mm -hmm. and then, like, there was like, a big hole right here. Quick two minute patch, ten dollars for the job, and I had to be reminded what these were for. Yeah, you know, we've done like softball, baseball glove repair, sometimes lacrosse too, and yeah, I think you um, get a lot of baseball mitts mm, yeah. to repair. People yeah. use those for a long time. Yeah, and it's just weird that I got a soccer, and because you bought up, you play soccer, and uh, soccer's weird to me. I don't know why anyone would repair that unless they were really expensive gloves. Yeah. Uh, people have brought in weird stuff, man, like yeah. protective cups, um, <laughs> the shin guards. <laughs> I've fixed up shin guards. People have yeah. hung on to those things. Yeah. There's, there's a lot to be said about sentimental value. Yes. You know, it's been documented like Shana, Shanahan has worn the same shoulder pads since junior hockey <laughs> or, you know, they don't protect anything. They're just there mm -hmm. just so you don't it's, break any rules. I had my shin guards from college uh, yeah. and I wore them up until maybe the last two, three years ago because they broke. Well, finally. I can fix that. Well, they're... They were challenged. <laughs> they're dead and gone now. Guards, and they're already gone. <laughs> and I bought ones that are probably even smaller than what those ones were. Yeah. They were already small. But you know what? They do come in handy, though. You do not want to get shin splits no. or yeah. You know, get a hit in the shin hurts. I, I played some indoor soccer myself, and it's painful. We get no protection. Yeah, <laughs> I've gotten hit in the face a few times with a <laughs> ball. Indoor soccer is the worst, man. Because <laughs> you do not comp, you, you cannot it's really. It's hard to anticipate yeah. the yeah. ball, yeah. especially when you're working the boards. Yeah. <laughs> Anywho, where were we? we so got you got yeah, you got so the skate guards here, the ones you're trying to sell me. Go ahead. So, <laughs> so this is another one of my inventions right here. Uh, it's got goalie house logo on it. Hey, Justin, he's a goalie coach. He's also an employee of mine. And uh, he coaches at Golden State Elite. Their home base is in uh, Valco, nice. uh, Cupertino Ice Center. So the idea behind this is that it's a goalie skate. I can hold that right Yeah, Oh. Yeah. So <laughs> this thing has the three blade. layers on it. It's got the webbing on the outside. Mm -hmm. It's got Velcro. A lot of the times, those, those squishy ones, um, you lose them or you hit somebody in the face because you accidentally flick it off the steel. Gotcha. So this will keep it centered and held yeah, on the place. Yeah, it loops around the, the yeah. holder there. It's got a rayon felt in the middle, nice. and uh, it's got the chamois, the chamois, 
<laughs> uh, I'm really selling right now. <laughs> I shouldn't be on TV. So what, you'd use that to like wipe your blade down then? Exactly, before nice. you put it on there. Yeah. So the idea is you want to wipe your steel. Keep yeah. your old, See, keep and that's protected. actually not bad, and I may have to stop by your store because what I do is I take my, my hockey sock and I wipe it on uh, the blade to yeah. get the, the ice off of it, but then sometimes I cut my sock doing that. And <laughs> yeah. And it used to, be socks, a, right? it used to be so. a trendy thing in the 80s and 90s where you would wrap it around mismatched sho socks too to wrap it around your skates. Oh, okay. It was like a team bonding thing, but uh, <laughs> we, I did it as well. I always use mis mismatched socks, but they do nothing for the blade. It actually costs more rust, and um, with this right here, it uh, it actually helps your, uh, your, your sharpening last longer. Nice. And we've I've tested this at Great America, rode the carousel, walked on concrete for about three hours, and it held up. The blade didn't cut through. You, wow. wow, really? I have pictures to prove it. That's I awesome. probably am not allowed to post Send it. Send those to uh, us. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah, yeah okay. be fine. We'll post a couple up there. Okay. Yeah. Which one? The one on the elephant or <laughs> the unicorn? Nobody stopped you from walking around in those things? Oh, they looked. Yeah? They look, but you know, when, yeah. when you're me, you know, yeah. <laughs> you don't care. We ran. <laughs> yeah, we ran. Skates. Yeah, nice. Winter Wonderland, most expensive two hours of my life, because <laughs> yes. it's twenty bucks to get in, <laughs> just to skate, and then to even get in to skate, you have to get in the park. Yeah, <laughs> they're smart. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. they're smart. Yeah, I, I wish they let us play um, some uh, some pond hockey out there. Yeah, you know that's kind of a rarity in the Bay yeah. Area, right? Yeah. So you always hear um, like with winter classics and whatnot, the players saying, "Oh, I grew up on a playing pond hockey, and it's great yeah. to get back to your roots and whatnot." And Marlowe folks the in, best in this backyard area. rink. Did you see that last season? No, I didn't. It's got the big sad face, maple leaf in the middle. Uh -huh. <laughs> he had like a third sheet of backyard wow. rink at his home. Wow. I mean, yeah, Mr. Patty. Hopefully, <laughs> he retires. He's actually. I've taken shots from him when I was younger. Him oh, and yeah? Friesen, because they were bunked together. Uh, Marlo's rookie season, Marlo kind of took, uh, 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 Jeff uh, took him under his wing and they were at hockey workout a lot uh, that first summer before he started playing. Yeah. And uh, uh, those, those are awesome. You know, I got lucky enough, was good enough to play against them when I was much younger. Like just some um, casual skates, yeah. you know, Nolan too. Yeah, that's the cool. East Ridge back in the day. And uh, yeah, I, uh, those, those are great just to play hockey. Those are yeah. awesome memories too. Yeah. So I'll always take those with me and to make a business out of it that people can benefit from, to be a part of it, it's just, I never take that for granted. Yeah. You know, and that's yeah. how we met too. It's yeah, absolutely. Just, and know. and it seems like most of the people, everybody I've ever talked to, they really appreciate the, the service, the proximity, obviously. Um, so you guys banner? have done a really great job. Is that a banner? A banner? Do you see the banner right outside, right no, next I must to my shop? It. Why? Um, we, I love movies, I'm a movie buff. Okay. Um, I've always referenced, highly recommended by Marta Metz. It's from Ace Ventura. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I'm going to have to tell you guys the, the meaning of that. Okay. But, uh, if you've never seen Ace Ventura, you should go watch it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm highly recommended by Marta Metz. And we got five stars on Yelp, so nice. I try to maintain that. Those are yeah. not paid reviews. <laughs> <laughs> They've hidden 35 of my <laughs> reviews so far. <laughs> you know, I'm about to go full walking right now <laughs> to Yelp. <laughs> Tell him, BS. <laughs> Is that acceptable? And we've gone full Saturday Night Live. <laughs> <laughs> so actually, can we talk like, sharks hockey now? Yeah, yeah. yeah so yeah. let's let's go ahead and do that because and, and we'd love to have you stick around and, and yeah. talk with us here. So uh, we were going to talk about sharks uh, penalties and a little bit about the PK. Yeah. And uh, I don't know. You want to just kick it off? I mean, we can, um, we can jump in. Sure. The Sharks penalty kill last year yeah. was uh, number two ranked, and they were only behind the Kings. Yeah. Only by a very small percentage, 2.2 percent. Right. So, second best penalty kill. They also were the fifth least amount of ice time on the penalty kill. If that makes any sense. But <laughs> so the amount of penalty kill ice time. Right. They were fifth least in the league, so they weren't penalized very often. But they also killed off most of the penalties that they were um, needing to kill, I guess. Well explained. I am just <laughs> all over the place right it's now. It's all good. No yeah. worries. Um, so I, I put together, I wanted to know, we were talking about this yeah. during the week, and I was, I was wondering what kind of infractions they were, what kind of penalties they were yes. taking. So how many how many were stick infractions? How many were, were something else? Um, 
So, and then I also wanted to do it by player. So I broke it down I created a spreadsheet and I might be off a little bit because okay. I counted, <laughs> I was tired of this last night. And uh, I counted some of the double minors as two minor penalties. And I think the NHL counted it as one. Yeah. So um, anyway, if you're gonna fact check me, that's that's my excuse. Yeah, and, and on your spreadsheet, at least I think you omitted any of the majors. So it's all, it's all minor, minor. minor um, penalties. Yeah. yeah. And so there were a lot of stick infractions and the, the greatest um, stick infraction or the, the one that got caught the most was something they said they were gonna crack down on right. this season. Slashing. So beginning of last season, into the preseason of last year, uh, the NHL really wanted to crack down on uh, slashing. Um, I think there was a lot of problems in the playoffs two years ago where guys are getting slashed on the wrist and they were getting injured. And it was bad because it was a lot of star players that were getting hurt. So they wanted to crack down on that um, to the point where the first two months of the season, preseason and the two months of the regular season, a guy just with one hand on the <laughs> stick taps a guy on the wrist. It's a slashing penalty. So, um, yeah. So there's a lot of um, slashing penalties. So if you look at the list, almost every Sharks player on the roster last season yeah. got a slashing penalty. <laughs> it's kind of crazy. Um, the other thing that stuck out was uh, Brent Burns yeah. uh, took the most penalties in terms of, not minutes, but um, just penalties, overall, overall penalties. penalties. Yeah. Yeah. Um, he had seven tripping penalties. So. Yeah. I was trying to think, and I didn't go into video evidence or anything, but a lot of times we talked about this in the yeah. last episode of where Burns on defense on, on two-on-ones and whatever um, instantly goes down on the ice, lays down the ice, and I think part of it, the reason is he has a huge reach. His, mm. He's a, he does he's have a, a long tall stick, guy. Yes. He has a long stick, and he's tall, so that just makes his reach even bigger. And I think part of the problem is par partially that mm -hmm. he's laying on the ice Sweeping a stick around, and yeah. trips the guy. Yeah, yeah. The other part is he's just a big dude standing up, sweeping a stick and <laughs> yeah. trips guys. Yeah. So um, I I think that's something he can definitely work on yeah. going into the season. Is hey, maybe. he's only minus sixteen last season? It yeah. must be a record. Seriously, <laughs> the plus minus though. Like yeah, uh, it's not. It was it's minus twenty four the season prior. It's an improvement. <laughs> it's it is an improvement. Yeah, he's not the best defensive defenseman yeah. right. and that but that's not what they're paying him for you know yeah. his rookie partner though he was yeah pretty impressive yeah it afforded martin to you know play in the minors mm -hmm. and maybe they rested him up for the playoffs i mean except for that martin? one game yeah yeah except for that one except game for that yeah. one yeah. we're not gonna talk about that one <laughs> yeah game. sorry guys no that's okay <laughs> <laughs> didn't mean to interrupt no no no, 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 no it's fine this, this yeah. discussion yeah. conversation yeah. it's all good and i picked yeah. the wrong carlson to um to clinch the division that one game no uh -huh. uh, between the legs one yeah we, we were doing a giveaway that night <laughs> I, i'm so sorry it's my fault <laughs> <laughs> that was completely that was blame cringy. you that was like yeah. cringe worthy watch that that was the so, same play that was <laughs> where he burned yeah martin yeah yeah it was like that's yeah, like the yeah. worst defensive breakout I've ever seen. I was like blown away because I thought Paul. I mean, I still think he was he was a very good defenseman. Yeah, that seemed like a very rookie mistake mm -hmm. thing to do. Like yeah. someone that so everyone else has said Joachim Ryan should have been playing, and yeah. Yeah. he pulled a Brent Burns. Yeah. yeah, just a brain fart at the worst time. We'll and, see, and, and, and Burns, we said, had the most penalties on the team. Now, I don't know if he had the most minutes. I, know he, I think Dylan best. had the most minutes. But that's probably fighting and Fighting and whatnot, yeah. yeah. Um, but I think with, with Burns, we saw a lot of the stick infractions, right? A lot of the tripping, a lot of the slashing. Mm -hmm. um, and I think a lot of those stick infractions come about, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, but I think they come about sometimes when you're kind of getting beat uh, yeah. either like foot speed yeah. or again if he's laying down and swinging the stick around yeah. and uh, we talked about Burns again having the most actual number of penalties but mm -hmm. overall the team hasn't taken very many we take a look no. and he had what was it yeah. 25 maybe 23 uh, 23 or 24 I mean, the Sharks have always been a fast team like the yeah. last five six seasons mm -hmm. and a lot of these calls that they make is when you're behind the play and you're trying to catch up so mm -hmm. they're trying to remove that from the game yeah yeah. So you, you get a guy who's uh, about to get on a break, and you, you smash his hand yeah. when you're trying to bump his stick or something like that to get break up the you know his his ability to control the puck, and then they call you for slashing, or he gets around you and you try to poke the puck away, and you get it in his stick, and so then you get called for tripping, right? So um, he I, still I think get the most points last season by one, right? What's that? He still get the most points last season. Burns. Yeah, I think he had for 67. Who? 
points last season. Oh, I thought it was Couture. I mean, it was. You mean on the Sharks? Sixty-six points for Couture, I think. Okay. Or, and then sixty-seven for Burns. Correct me if I'm wrong, guys. Sure. I'm we'll put the editor's notes. Yeah. 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 Here. No. <laughs> It's a little pop up. Yeah. Oh God, those pop ups. Yeah. yeah. Music video pop ups. Yeah, yeah exactly. That's what it's, what it's yeah. like. Do they still have those effects? <laughs> I don't. Yeah, we're using them. Yeah. All right. Make you pretty. There you <laughs> go. One of those filters. It's not Snapchat. <laughs> so anyway, uh, yeah, no, it was just you know I saw um, you know that the Sharks didn't get that many penalties and that Burns um, doesn't. I mean, he gets penalties, but in the grand scheme of things. He's still not taking many more penalties than many of the other guys in the league. We take a look at some of the top penalty getters in the league. Did you know Malkin had 87 minutes worth of penalties, I think is what That's it was? That's impressive. Yeah. It's I mean, Crosby amount of minutes. Yeah, Crosby amount of minutes. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so last night when I was going through all these stats, yeah. I was going game by game looking at the game logs mm-hmm. and recording this very tiring last night. Um, but I saw some things stick out and one of them was like team fast teams like uh, Vegas. Mm-hmm. A lot more stick infractions that were called against the Sharks and very I want to say uncharacteristic compared to other games. There was a handful of games yeah. where the Sharks had zero penalties, mm-hmm. which was amazing. And those were towards the end of the season when yeah. the referees start swallowing their whistles mm-hmm. more. Um, but I, a couple other things that stood out while doing that Vlasic and Braun like didn't take a penalty yeah. from February on, <laughs> which is amazing to yeah. me. I think Vlasic, Vlasic and Braun are the two best defensive. Uh, Did Vlasic have ten I, goals I, last season? He, he was up there. Yeah, like he he had a d- decent for him. Yeah. very mm-hmm. good offensive. He season. had like a borderline offensive defensive yeah. season. <laughs> but I think I feel like those two guys are so hard to play against, and it's amazing that they didn't They're take definitely penalties. Shutdown guys. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But like you see him. You know, they give a little cross right. I, I feel like they just know how to yeah. toe the line of what they can get away with yeah. without well, going too much. And you look at the difference between a Brent Burns and a Vlasic, and it's not like Vlasic's any faster necessarily. I mean, he's probably about the same foot speed anyway. But mm-hmm. positionally, I think Vlasic is much better, right? So I think that's something that when we talk about the amount of penalties that Burns had taken, again, it's not absorbent. It just happened to be the most number of penalties on, on the team. If you want to cut down on that, then you're talking about being a better uh, positional player. And I think that's where you start losing on the foot speed, right? People getting around you mm-hmm. and you have to make that turn and try to get them and you get your stick out, boom, penalty, right? Yeah. So um, when you look at Vlasic and the way that he plays, now he's got a really good defensive partner in Braun as well and they feed off of each other, yes, but they're still in the right position most times. Yeah. And he doesn't have to do those weird stretching out, trying to you know get a stick in where you might actually clip a, st- a skate, right? His body's in the right spot. So I think that's a really big difference between um, a guy like Vlasic and a guy like Burns. Um, obviously, Vlac- Vlasic is the more defensively minded of the two. Yeah. But I, you're going to cut down your penalty minutes when you're in the right position, I think, and that, mm. that's a fair assessment. Yeah, yeah. definitely. We're not going to talk about ice conditions at SAP, right? Especially, <laughs> uh, especially by the away door. Oh yeah, yeah. Okay, it's uh, it's yeah. different. It's a uh, yeah. You want go, go ahead? You can, yeah, it's it's no, um, fire away. I uh, I, I have an inside scoop on that because I have a lot of friends that work events there, like mm-hmm. union concerts and stuff. Okay, you have to take those into consideration. I mean, Staples Center, for example. Yeah. Right. I'm I think that's the SAP. busiest arena in the it world. It's the busiest arena yeah. in the world because you got what four teams playing there. Mm-hmm. And, you know, and you got to change the signage for the Clippers, the Lakers, and then right. you got the Kings. Mm-hmm. And they don't concerts. I don't know if people know this, but NHL teams. NHL teams that have other things going on, especially yeah. NBA teams, yeah. they don't melt the ice before every uh, game. They the put ice rubber stays, on top. Yeah. yeah, the ice stays the entire year. Yeah. They cover it. So yeah. if there's a concert at SAP the night before a Sharks game, there's a rubber mat, then there's the stage, the yeah. seating, everything's on top of the ice. And then that's all done. They take it all down and uncover the ice and play the next day. Yeah. So a lot of times the ice where you're saying the was it the away it's uh, uh it, it can contribute i mean game six if you guys can remember i'm trying to remember what event happened the night before but besides the fact that the horn sounded off and then you see the light and then that goal that nobody saw mm-hmm. they counted it in totally ruined the sharks momentum because the game was tied at that point right yeah was it tied or was it two to one already but that game six the sharks had the best chance of beating the the knights you know the cinderella story <laughs> of the year but yeah, it, it kind of sucked. It killed yeah. it, the whole energy of the building is gone. But mm-hmm. there was a lot of players falling. I, I noticed. Know if you that. guys remember the second yeah, period, okay. I do. 
and uh, it was the neutral zone towards where Jones was. It was just we saw it's like it was sticky ice or something, right? Yeah, there. yeah. Couture fell twice, and I don't know. As a as a guy in a hockey business, it's just something you notice too. You know, on top of really yeah. bad calling referees <laughs> <laughs> or non calling, non calling. Yeah. yeah, but yeah, it was uh, it was quite a run. I mean, the Sharks gave them a run for their money. That mm -hmm. overtime win was. That's the backbreaker, I think. Yeah, I can't uh, wait for the Sharks to come back. I imagine if it went the other way. Imagine the Sharks scored in that game and took control of the series. Yeah. Or that would have tied it up, I think. I don't remember. But yeah. it, it's a complete overtime. Whoever is wins such... game three wins the series like 75% yeah. of the time. Mm -hmm. I mean, numbers, you know. When when the NHL started doing actuarial, I love numbers, insurance, and everything. Like, <laughs> it really opened up the game. Yeah. I mean, money yeah. ball. I mean, Toronto has the youngest general manager in the league. Mm -hmm. He's barely 30. He, he, I have more facial hair than he does. <laughs> <laughs> no, but that's just, you know, the game is evolving, right? Yeah. You know, it's mainstream. I would, I'd, I'd look, I think it's official. We can officially say hockey is mainstream. Mm -hmm. It oh, really yeah. is. It's a worldwide sport. Mm -hmm. So, penalty kill. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I think that's about it for the penalties. Yeah. Uh, oh, some other things that stuck out. If uh, the Sharks ever get a too many men on the ice call, oh. uh, <laughs> Kevin LeBanc is yep. a sure bet that he's going to be serving it. Uh, <laughs> Do I don't you know keep why. stats on that too? Yeah. yeah. Well, it's just like yeah. six times. Six a times. designated server. Six right? out of the eight times that they got a too many men, uh, LeBanc went in. I guess they just figure we're never going to use him on the PK. So probably not on the PK. And then when he gets out of the box, assuming when they kill yeah. a penalty, he's they're he's attacking going yeah. the other way out. Yeah. Or he is an offensive out. threat. He's quick. Yeah. 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 Remember Hall when he comes off the penalty box oh, yeah. last season and scores on Price from mm -hmm. a wide, wide pass? <laughs> That's when you knew he was going to win the hard trophy. <laughs> I called it. I was watching the game at the shop. Jersey but, fanboy. Hey, uh, good job, <laughs> Niami, for doing better than Carey last season. Earned him another. I mean, I mean, just side note here. I mean, Niami, uh, the fans, it was a mix reaction I, with yeah, him yeah. but it was just amazing to see how bad someone could do I mean eight goals the first game eight goals the second game and then still do better than Carey Price towards the end of the season <laughs> you know <laughs> that's how bad is that how bad Montreal Montreal is in a bad yeah. place right now yeah. same with Ottawa those yeah. two teams are just yeah. Fire I listen sale. to yeah, I listen to NHL <laughs> yeah. Network daily, and that's like mostly what they talk about. It's yeah. just how, how terrible they oh. are, and they're not getting better no. anytime soon. No. I, yeah. I'd love to see the Sharks win uh, win a cup someday. Oh yeah, and wouldn't we all? And yeah. I, my only dream in life really is uh, watching the Sharks and the Devils meet in the Stanley Cup Finals. Uh, that is like my ultimate. For? I don't know. People ask me. <laughs> Like let's jump, you know, let's Flip jump the bridge when we get there. Yeah. <laughs> but I will disappear for two weeks. I I'm bet. gonna go to every single home game. Yeah, <laughs> you know, it's like who's your favorite kid, right? Right. But yeah, that's my ultimate uh, that's fantasy funny. for sure. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Of course, I'm gonna root for the Sharks. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> this, is fun. this is an original starter. So. Yeah. Actually, tell us about the jacket. Uh, so I, I uh, scored this from. Uh, I found this. I still can't tell you guys on on record. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> but as to say, it's a little too big for me. Um, I'm gonna wear this at the Oscar that's, game. That's yeah. how starter jackets are supposed yeah. to be. They're supposed to be baggy to be and big, loose, right? Yeah. And they technically are windbreakers, right? <laughs> so yeah, um, it's really cool. I'll let you guys touch it later. <laughs> so, are they gonna Thank bring you. this back? I guess. Yeah. <laughs> Well, thanks for having me. <laughs> oh, hope to come back again soon. Well, yeah. we're not letting you off the hook just yet. Actually, um, Essen, we're going to do a story time. Yeah. And normally it's Aaron and I, obviously, because we're the only ones on the show. But since Essen is here and he's got a plethora of awesome stories, he's going to pick one or two maybe. I think just one. And then um, we'll just hear what you got to say. Yeah, I just uh, wanted to share a story with the Sharks Foundation last year. You guys know the um, that uh, two-day event, uh, Be a Shark for a Day? Yes. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. like, um, you know, they have a limited number of availabilities that can participate in that mm -hmm. and all the proceeds go to the Sharks Foundation. Mm -hmm. um, we 
had a dealing last year to where they approached me and uh, I agreed to help out. So like become a part of the whole process of like the first day they get their equipment, they get the whole tour of SAP Center and mm -hmm. then uh, Shark Size Training Facility, they get their jerseys, the whole treatment. The whole shebang, right? And wait, 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 did you get to go into the locker room? No, because I was too busy on the other side across the street uh, sharpening yeah. their skates. But you could have been in the locker I room. I could have. I could have helped, yeah. There you go. There's your in. Okay, so yeah. to be fair, I didn't bring it up <laughs> this episode. Okay, You were about to. There's a, I was thinking it. Yeah. I didn't say we it. We were all thinking it because of you. <laughs> I can put in a good word for you for the upcoming one. Paul's, I don't know if you know this, Paul's never been in the locker That's room. That's the one place. He's been everywhere in Which SAP? locker room? The, the main one at SAP the, or the yes. one here to practice facility? The Sharks main locker room, okay. yeah. Okay. Well, my grandma made a diorama to spec. Okay. Yeah. So, that yeah, gets you closer. I'll, I'll look we'll at, just, look at we'll that. We'll just superimpose <laughs> it to where we can cut you in there you're there. Yeah. Okay. But yeah, it's, uh, yeah, you can, we, can, we can help make that happen, you know. You heard it. Yeah, so that's on. I, I'm, I'm not <laughs> saying I'm gonna do it directly, I mean, <laughs> but I might know someone that might know someone that might know right. someone. That would be good. You just never know. <laughs> oh God, here we go again. <laughs> Sorry. All right. Anyway, um, back, anyway yes, back so Sharks Foundation. Right. There's about what 30, 40 people came in within the speck of two hours, and uh, we, between two or three of us, we were just sharpening skates, mm -hmm. uh, selling tape, and just kind of. Um, letting people see what we do because most of them did not know that we existed um until they walked across the street so it's nice to be a part of the whole experience uh douglas murray crankshaft was nice. there nice he uh is a very very intimidating individual to be standing <laughs> around with in a very tiny space because he was behind me cutting a stick working on some gear because he had uh, some guests from sweden that was going to play hockey too and we were able to provide him with some uh, with some skates nice. and use gear and uh it was really really cool you know um uh to be a part of that whole thing to kind of pretend that i'm their equipment manager to an extent i will yeah that's pretty cool i can i've never worked a day in my life as an equipment manager in a show or or work with anybody the closest thing was shadowing uh corby uh Antropic when he was the equipment manager for the uh echl stockton thunder mm -hmm. about three years ago and uh that was really cool to be a part of it and mm -hmm. To contribute that and and uh, meet new people and uh, some of those people uh, I played hockey with you know like because uh, it's an experience mm -hmm. and a lot of the Sharks alumni was part of it and you know you get to see him play Brody Brazil I think didn't <laughs> score a goal and fell maybe eight times <laughs> <laughs> trying to get him to uh, come in the shop and get a sharpening <laughs> and um, you know it's a uh, come on Brody <laughs> <laughs> It's going to need more than Sharpen a sharpening. Yeah. It's going to need more than a sharpening. Come on. <laughs> I've been advocating since 2015 that him and Chris Hardwick should do something together. <laughs> Who's I'd, taller? I'd put my money on Brody. Yeah? If he gets the block to stand on? Or <laughs> Remember that? Yeah, when they did that <laughs> behind fact. the scenes? <laughs> yeah. Both fact. of them stand on blocks. Yeah, I mean, okay. that at midnight show, there's yeah. no way Chris Hardwick is six foot tall. <laughs> no. no there's not even no close. way. No. But yeah, so hi Brody. <laughs> but yeah, I just wanted to share the story with you guys, and uh, maybe we'll do it again this upcoming uh, Shark for a day. Yeah, that'd yeah. be great. Yeah, that'd be awesome. So actually, speaking of Shark Foundation, um, there was a tournament that you're considering having. Yes. And I think you have some details that maybe uh, you'd be okay. Sharing. I would love to share that with you yeah. guys. Yeah, so uh, Andy Coons uh, owns a vending machine company, and um, he manages a lot of the. Uh, arcade games. I think some of them were originally at Shark Size, mm -hmm. and a couple of them ended up in my shop. Nice. The uh, if you guys can remember Midway's NBA Jam, they also made a version uh, called Open Eyes Challenge, where this is how these guys <laughs> discovered <laughs> me and found me and introduced themselves. Was that no, they no, saw no. <laughs> they saw that game, right? No, I'm just trying to <laughs> can we edit that out. <laughs> no, I'm trying to fake news. <laughs> this is. <laughs> No, because you already bought the step steel. I totally gave it. But it sounds so much cooler. Are we going to edit this out? No, 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 keep going. Okay, okay, right, going good. okay so we're having... Tournament. So we're yeah. having a 
tournament of sorts at the shop. Uh, maybe we can pick a charity. Yeah. To uh, maybe even the Sharks Foundation, we can give up funds to. Have a I think Sharks Foundation would be an awesome pick. It's that's the most logical choice. Yeah. In my opinion, yeah. We can donate the proceeds uh, for the hockey tournament for the On Ice Challenge. Mm-hmm. We pick. Um, I don't know. We can keep it to under. It has to be doubles, right? So two on two. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So we can stack it, right. and then we'll get a bunch of rolls of quarters because it either takes dollar bills and quarters, and I can also give out prizes to the winners. Yeah. And um, provide beverages. Maybe have a barbecue. Very good. Maybe we can do it like the last week of preseason before the new shark season begins, and yeah. uh, we can do a live video. Yeah, that'd be great. And we can plug everybody. You yeah. two, of course, will be your own team. Uh, right? Yes. Yeah. yeah. We'll yeah. probably be wearing our. You will definitely sure. will be. Some merchandise. Yeah. We're gonna have FF. That's like <laughs> a, a shorthand logo, right? Yeah. yeah. Make a version two point sure. already. Yeah. We'll have some soccer balls out there <laughs> for you. We'll have the sauce kit. Oh, nice. Yeah, I ordered a bunch of sauce kit. Excellent. So. Do you have a super deaker by chance? I wish. No. Yeah, I have one. Bring it. <laughs> <laughs> um, just FYI, there is no street hockey on the rooftop because mm. it's not completely flat, like oh, unlike the movie Clerks. Like Clerks, yeah. yeah. You know, probably noticed that by my barcode, by the cash register, there is a little sign like this tiny that yeah. says, "If you plan on stealing something, please let us know." <laughs> 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 so, <laughs> but yeah, tournament at the shop, two on two open eyes challenge. Come on by. We're going to give away prizes. Uh, Fin Factor and us will do an announcement and yeah. we'll pick teams and uh, we'll... We'll hammer out the for details. Sure. Yeah, the we'll, details we'll solidify the date. We'll solidify the time and we'll figure out what the rules and the charity and yeah. all that stuff. I'm pretty sure we're doing Sharks Foundation. But yeah. um, once all that comes together, yeah, you'll you'll see it from both us at the Fin Factor and Bay Area Hockey Repair. And I'm not sure if there's anything else you wanted to, to say about the tournament, but... Um, it'll be coming up pretty soon, yeah. so hopefully the end of the September. Good. Because what, first first week of October yeah, yeah. is, is, it, uh, is the Stanley Cup run again. Yeah, is the arcade machine in your store currently? Yeah. So it's yeah. up and running, people won't come in and practice? It's probably full. Andy, can you please come by and take the money out <laughs> so we can split it? So if you want to practice for the tournament, it's yeah. a good time. Yeah. A good place to go. Yeah. See, quite see, a, Aaron we, and I, we played at Nickel City, yeah, which is now closed. Yeah. Uh, um, and it was it was Nichols, so we got a ton of practice in. We also uh, had a buddy that worked there. We did. You don't remember Mike? I don't remember come Mike. in. What was it? You paid what ten bucks to get in, right? And then two dollars. Yeah, yeah. two dollars. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. And he would come in, open up the thing, and just. Tap, 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 that tap, I tap, don't tap. remember, but oh, yeah. that's that's good to know. I broke I broke the the Mike Tyson boxing game there. Oh, oh yeah? did you? Yeah, that was the best day of my life. <laughs> I got kicked out. <laughs> that's just right hooked. Nice. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, um, we're we're a little rusty, but uh, I would I would say we were champion level. I mean, our we names were, are currently still oh at the yeah top. <laughs> like it's, it, the machine is defaulted into it's our great name. it's got um andy changed the battery in there so yeah. even you plug it is uh it'll save your memory nice. and the way to keep track of your your record the good old days yeah is you put your three digit initials <laughs> and then your birthday that's right and it'll save your info forever you got it yeah, I still have the best record right now. So, <laughs> bubble hockey, not so much. I will not participate. <laughs> uh, I have the worst record. I am currently two eighteen and five. Oh wow! I have lost lost an OT five times. Ouch! Jeez. Yes, but you made it to OT. <laughs> well, thank you. Could be worse. Yeah. Could be two and twenty-three. <laughs> right? I can't be Always good at everything. Look on the bright essentially, it is two and twenty-three. <laughs> oh man! It essentially, is two. Oh yeah, but when you okay, right. whatever. <laughs> <laughs> trying to, again, trying to look on the bright side. Thanks for being the rain cloud. <laughs> Can we do this while playing hockey one of these days? Just yeah. get plugged in on the bench and just... Yeah, sure. Yeah. I'm this for it. Great. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Yes. It was Thanks a pleasure. Thank you yeah. for having us. Or thank you for having us. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Thanks for uh, having us, us allow you house. to come on yeah. to our show is what I meant to say. Uh, thanks Whatever. for bringing all your gear and showing yeah. up. Yeah. Yeah. Thank too. you, guys. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, so with that... I guess we're done with episode 11. That's it. Thanks for tuning in. We hope you enjoyed. Uh, again, Essen, thank you for, for showing up. Thank you for Bay Area me. Hockey Repair, if you need anything fixed, or if you are looking to uh, buy some skate guards, that kind of thing. Really good quality stuff, so please check them out. Okay, so anything else? Uh, just like, subscribe, and share our video with all of your friends. And 
That's about it. Oh, actually, you know what? We forgot the 200 subs right. for the shirt. Right. Oh. We are at, currently, as of today, 191. Two. 192 Thanks, Brad. subscribers. <laughs> uh, we need eight more, and when we get to 200, we are going to give away yet another Fin Factor t-shirt. And how do they win the shirt? Uh, if you comment on either Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter, and tag three of your friends, um, that would enjoy the show. And to be sure to be a subscriber yourself, um, we'll pick a winner from that pool of people that do that. Yes, and, and make sure that we can see your comment with your friends. Otherwise, we, you're just tagging your friends for no reason. Right. In any case, uh, I guess we will see you guys next week. Next week. Thanks. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Hey, everyone. Thanks for checking out the show. You can support us by following us at The Fin Factor on Twitter and Facebook. You can also find us on Instagram as at Fin Factor. If you're listening to us as a podcast, please, please, please give us a five-star review. And if you want to support our show, share our episode with your friends. Please leave us a comment of what you thought of this episode, and if you want us to cover anything else, let us know.